a brand new Blade and Cell MMO from NCSoft dropped recently, and both Mrs. Sticks and I got to play roughly a dozen or so hours of it on stream. Now, I, I will preface this entire thing by stating that this is not the Blade and Soul that you remember. This is instead a cross-platform MMO for PC and for mobile. NCSoft have taken the Blade and Soul intellectual property and they have essentially implemented parts of it into a semi-dragon-esque, semi-Genshin impact theme that inspired game. I do want to stress, this is very Blade and Soul-like, but at the same time, this is about as far from Blade and Soul, the PC MMO that you and I played, that it could be. Now, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the little bell notification, that way you remain up to date with every single thing that I post, and I post daily. Do not miss out. I'm gonna go ahead here and try to keep this as short, condensed, and concise as possible. We're gonna break this down bit by bit, beginning with the combat. The combat is not action-oriented. Blade and Soul for PC was a very high quality action game. This Blade and Soul game, which is titled Hoyan, is not an action game. Rather, it is a tab target MMO, which means the combat style is completely different. Now, the tab target combat isn't bad. It's actually pretty well done. You have one character that you control, and then a grand total of five different characters that you comprise your team with. Each character has essentially their own individual skill. They make up what is essentially a five ability hotbar down the bottom of the screen. What this means is that based off of the potentially dozens of different characters you can obtain, you can build your character or your characters however you want. Every character has their own unique class archetype, like tank, DPS, support. The character that you choose to play will affect how well you do in different content. Mrs. Stix and I were stuck in a boss fight because we were choosing to play as a DPS and then had various different DPS and healer characters as part of our team. We swapped out one of the DPS for a tank, moved the tank to the main protagonist character, controllable character slot, and then we managed to clear the boss fight because of the beneficial stat bonuses we got as a direct result of playing as the tank. Now, there are other game modes that are present in game. There's a turn-based one that Mrs. Stick's got to play. I didn't get far enough where I can actually engage in that content. Otherwise, this is a contrasting difference to what we experienced when we played Blade and Toe for the first time years ago. The story takes elements from the original Blade and Toe game. As an example, we met Nam Soyu, who was kidnapped or kidnapped by that uh, the Black Ram captain or whatever he was. That was present here. We see all the characters from the original Blade and Soul game present. We see story elements that were taken from the original and then implemented into this while this is at the same time set in a different timeline. I've been told it's a prequel. I've been told it's set a year before the events of Blade and Soul, but at the same time, we see events that transpired in the original that are playing out the same way, featuring characters that shouldn't even be there anymore. So I feel as though the stories, are, uh, the, you know, they're taking liberties with it. They're using parts of the original while kind of moving in a new direction because this is technically a new game. The story overall though was very fun. It was surprisingly detailed. The characters were beautifully animated. Everything was incredibly fluid. I cannot stress enough how good the story was comparatively to the original Blade and Soul. Seeing the characters move like they did, the expressions that they were able to emote. Dude, I, I think in part due to Zenless Zone Zero, there was a significant amount of inspiration taken from it. You can just look at the character animations and the expressions and, and you will see it immediately. Before I talk any further about Hoyan, I do want to take a moment here to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal and I can't thank you all enough for the support. The animations outside of cutscenes, even just when running around and engaging in combat, were also pretty good. Graphically, the game is, as you've no doubt noticed, 
very different to the original Blade and Soul. The original was a fully 3D Korean game with actual full bodied characters with the character designer being the same designer for Nike, for Stellar Blade, for Magna Carta, for Destiny Child. This one is not. This one is a fairly generic anime game. It looks kind of like Dragon Nest mixed with Aura Kingdom mixed with Genshin Impact, which honestly isn't bad because if you think about it, the overwhelming majority of players these days play gacha games, and that is kind of what this looks like. It looks like a dumbed down MMO version of Genshin Impact, and it works. I love anime games, so honestly, I thought it looked pretty decent. There are better games out there. I thought Blue Protocol looked better. I think Genshin, Wuthering Waves, even Tower of Fantasy looked better. The world is similar, but not the same to Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul featured segregated zones, and by a segregated zone, I mean there was a large, just as an example, circle. And that circle was populated with various different quest hubs. You'd run from quest hub to quest hub with no loading screen whatsoever. Then to move to the next area, you'd go through a loading screen. This game is pretty much the same. It features the same circular world, but where Blade and Soul gave you the freedom to run anywhere across any area to get to any point you want to, this game is very linear. It has thin little pathways that you're required to follow, which you can see if you just look at the minimap on the screen. This was very mobile feeling. Mobile MMOs, most of them anyway, in cross-platform MMOs don't feature large open areas like the original Blade and Soul did. There were a ton of areas though, which were all present in the original incarnation of the game. Voice acting was very good. There were three different languages, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. There was no English dub. And for those of you that played the English localized version of the original Blade and Soul, you know how bad <laughs> the dub was. The dub in this is surprisingly good. I played it in Japanese because I think personally Japanese dubs are the highest quality typically. They're the dubs for anime, for JRPGs. So I went with that. It sounded fantastic. They brought the story to life. They gave the characters emotion. It was fantastic. Since this is a cross-platform MMO though, there was gotcha present and it wasn't very good. You require several dupes to unlock all of your character's skills, which means you're going to spend an exorbitant amount of money if you ever want to fully make use of those characters. And the rate of specific high rarity character acquisition is not very high, which means that you're gonna spend even more money to obtain them. So essentially you're gonna have to pay hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars if you want to even have a full set of competitive skills for your characters, it is not good. But then at the same time, there are much worse gotcha systems out there. But just because there are worse systems out there doesn't inherently make this good. It just makes it less bad. This wouldn't be a cross-platform game without some degree of autoplay. This game does have auto pathing. It does have auto uh, combat and auto abilities, but not for everything. But even if you do choose to engage in auto combat, they have made it so difficult to utilize that you're gonna die 95% of the time that you don't over drastically over level or overpower the content. Monsters absolutely destroy you. Bosses destroy you. The character, the AI, does not utilize abilities to keep you alive, so they essentially just have you smacking your mouse one button repeatedly as your HP is whittled down and you just you come back to your computer dead. It's stupid. And therefore, I think the autoplay isn't necessarily bad in the game because you're not really going to be able to use it. The most we use it for is just auto pathing from objective A to objective B while you do something else. And finally, this is an English game. It is fully translated and localized into English, which means you can play it right now if you want to. However, it's not released outside of Asia. Interestingly enough, I'm not quite sure why that is since they've taken the time to fully localize it. I honestly don't know if it will ever release outside of Asia, but you can play the game right now. All you have to do is download the client, download the purple launcher, install it, and play. You don't need a VPN, nothing. That's it. Overall, there is a lot to do in this game. It is a surprisingly fun cross-platform MMO. I have played much worse. At the end of the day, I do not think this is bad. 
I think that this, if I were to rank it, I would say as a mobile MMO, this is one of the best ones out there. This is significantly better than Tyrus Land was. As a PC MMO, I would say it's about as good as Dragon Nest. If Dragon Nest instead had tab target combat, I think it's better than Aura Kingdom. I think it's better than a bunch of other older anime MMOs. I think it's probably the best cross-platform MMO out there outside of Tower of Fantasy. And I guess not including Grand Saga or Odin Valhalla Rising because I haven't played them yet. Is this a worthy successor, however, to Blade and Soul? Not even remotely close to. This is a pale comparison to what Blade and Soul was. And outside of its story, outside of its characters, this isn't Blade and Soul. Hey, hey you, where do you think you're going? Don't you close out of this tab. I didn't give you permission to do that. Sit your ass back down. Click one of the two videos that are gonna be on screen in just a moment and keep watching my content. Keep enjoying my content.